impact does ocean warming have on tropical cyclones in the northern bay of Bengal? Hello friends, Jim here. So this, this is just an abstract, but it's a very interesting finding. And it's a, from the larger paper that's published in JGR Oceans. And the title is The Role of Anom Anomalous Ocean Warming on the Intensification of Pre-Monsoon Tropical Cyclones over the Northern Bay of Bengal. And uh, Akka Prava Ray and Sudeep Das and Surav Seal are the authors. Okay, let's go through the abstract. We'll look at the key points, plain language summary, and take it from there. The Northern Indian Ocean, typically considered to be the Bay of Bengal or Bob, has experienced several stronger tropical cyclones during the pre-monsoon season in the last few years. Similarly, in 2021, Cyclone Yas reached a very severe cyclonic storm stage, abbreviated VSCS, despite forming above 14 degrees north latitude. In comparison to the other three cyclones that formed in 2007, with a similar cyclogenesis location and track, the pre-cyclonic condition in 2021 is more favorable. It was found that from 2007 to 2021, the area associated with sea surface temperature greater than 31 degrees C increased from 0.1% to 29%. Eha. Just need the ocean heat, uh, you know, the specific heat content of water. That is a huge amount of energy to go up basically, you know, almost two orders of magnitude. That's just insane. Continuing. The Research Moored Array for African, Asian, Australian Monsoon Analysis and Prediction Buoy at 15 degrees north also recorded an increasing trend of 0.1 C per year in both average and maximum temperatures during May. The warming in 2021 is primarily linked with marine heat wave events, which extensively cover the northern Bay of Bengal, for a longer duration, starting from the first week of May, such warming extends even to the subsurface, providing the heat required to convert the depression into VSCS within two days. In other words, right, for storm starting out as a tropical depression, right, and then it works its way up to cyclonic activity. That's what they're getting at there. The Western the weaker western boundary current during 2021 made the northern Bay of Bengal fresher and favorable for cyclone intensification. The associated anti-cyclonic eddy along the track extended the abnormal distribution of low saline water even up to the subsurface, about 100 meters, which is vital in increasing the ocean heat content. In other words, it made the water fresher and enabled it to heat up more so. That's what they're saying. These simultaneous pre-cyclonic oceanic conditions can be incorporated into the weather model to understand and predict the rapid intensification within a shorter duration. Okay, so what are the key points from here? The area over the Bay of Bengal with sea surface temperature greater than 31 C has increased from 0.1% to 29% from 2007 to 2021. A marine heat wave event with more than 20 days during May 2021 played a key role in the rapid intensification of the cyclone Yas. The warming is also extended to the subsurface and confined because of widespread fresh water plumes 
during the early summer of 2021. So let's look at the plain language summary. In recent years, the northern part of the Indian Ocean, especially the Bay of Bengal, has seen a larger number of intense tropical cyclones during the summer. Only a few of them form over the northern basin above or north of 14 degrees north latitude. Among four such similar cyclones during 2007, 9, 17, and 21, the latest cyclone Yas was intensified unusually because of a much suitable prevailing oceanic conditions. It was found that from 2007 to 21, the area associated with sea surface temperature greater than 31 degrees C increased from 0.1% to 29%. That's a huge increase in area. The northern area experienced a gradual warming with a rate of 0.1 C per year. Eventually, this unusual warming corresponded to a widespread long-lasting marine heat wave event during the entire month of May. This typical phenomenon of ocean warming is extended deeper and confined longer because of the abnormal spread of fresh water over the northern Bay of Bengal. The embedded clockwise ocean circulation on the track of the cyclone Yas also ensured to keep the area warmer, which further fueled the cyclone. The unusual oceanic conditions and its response can be considered to improve the forecasting model for better predictions, so forth. Now, I want to go back to the clockwise ocean circulation. Clockwise ocean circulation. This is in the this is in the northern hemisphere. It's north of the equator. So Coriolis will act upon this and will basically cause a convergence zone in the middle, doming up the water so you get a downwelling in the center. If this was counterclockwise, you'd have an upwelling in the center. And the upwelling might very well bring in some cooler oceanic water to the surface, lowering the sea surface temperature. So when they say that the phenomenon of ocean warming extended deeper and confined longer, that's because of this clockwise flow. It's basically tr keeping that warm water trapped there. Then when they t talk about, oh, that the ocean warming extended deeper, well, that's the ocean heat content. That's the ocean heat content impacting what's going on here. So when they also talk about the how quickly storms intensified and how large the sea surface temperature is increasing, you're basically having heat diffusion from below. warming the, that oceanic region. So we're starting to see, now it would be interesting to look at the vertical profile in this uh, section of the ocean, you know, see what the temperature, the density, the salinities are doing, to see what kind of stratification regime we have uh, taking place, you know, Without seeing that, I can't really comment. But it wouldn't surprise me if we're seeing a strengthening in the stratification. I'm just speculating here, but it would not surprise me. But like everything else, marine heat waves are occurring more and more. They're lasting longer. They're more intense. We see in the Pacific Ocean. We're seeing warmer uh, oceanic waters everywhere, which are now fueling very strong storms. Whether it's in the Atlantic, Pacific, now the Indian Ocean. That is due to the high level of ocean heat content. And remember, cyclonic storms you know, typhoons, cyclones, hurricanes, right? They are a energy distribution mechanism for the planet. 
basically take heat energy from location A and spread it to elsewhere. And there's a lot of energy to spread. There's a lot of heat energy in the ocean that's being spread. And a lot of that energy also goes into the atmosphere, allowing for, you know, you know warmer air holds more moisture, so then you get precipitation bombs. So the oceans have absorbed over 93% of energy emissions that humans have introduced into the system since the burning of fossil fuels commenced. The oceans are stratifying. That heat energy is no longer being sequestered as efficiently to death. It's got to do something. It's got to go somewhere. Thermodynamics informs us that it either spreads horizontally or vertically upwards. And we're seeing it. So, um, you know, I kind of wanted to mention it because, you know, of the location, the Bay of Bengal, because usually a lot of, you, you see a lot of uh, focus on what's going on in the Atlantic, what's happening in the Pacific. You know, we need to also remember there's another large body of water, uh, it's called the Indian Ocean. And uh, some of that ocean heat in the, in the ocean, as well as from the Pacific, extends its way down to Antarctica. And it's helping to melt the land ice, the, you know, the shelf ice that protrudes out over the ocean, impacting, also impacting some of the deep uh, currents uh, found around Antarctica. Did a video on that. So here is yet another consequence of all the energy we put into the system. There you have it. We'll talk soon.